be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. Welcome to this episode of Rabbit Trails. I want to thank you all so much for joining us today. And uh, also welcome my partner in crime, Mac Masano. Max, how are you, brother? Hey, man, I am doing great. I just uh, actually moved this past week. That's right, so, across country. That's right, from Boston to fun and fashionable Greenville, Illinois. Yeah, now you're at the lake house, yeah? That's right. Isn't it? That sounds so she-she. It's right. my lake house. I'm going to go out on my house. deck and have a little coffee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I've seen, I've seen some of the videos that Kellen has posted from there, and it looks just beautiful and peaceful, and uh, it's got to be a huge difference from being in the city. Totally. Yeah. Let's, let, let me tell you about huge difference, by the way. I also had a little break from uh, social media because I was packing and moving and driving right. across country. And for a hot second, I kind of forgot all the stuff that flies around down there. So <laughs> when I came back to reality and flipped my phone on, ah, it, was, it was like total sensory overload, right? <sighs> Absolutely, man. I'll tell you, it's, uh, it's, it's just like you keep thinking. It's like Al Pacino. I think I just got out of everything and it keeps sucking me back in. <laughs> it's just that way. Uh, we are... Uh, it's a whirlwind. It's a whirlwind. And I get bombarded with pictures and messages like you do. You know, is this real? Is this right? <laughs> Would you do this? And you just kind of go, my God. It's just really funny. I think our industry is one of those industries. I'm not going to say the only one, but it's one of those industries that <clears throat> I think sincerely, when we went to beauty school, we really embraced and believed everything that we were taught, you know, and oh, it was yeah. just like, Oh, wow. That's cool. Okay. I'm glad I know that. And, <laughs> and then <laughs> when we get out <laughs> into the industry, actually practicing the profession. Okay. Actually practicing the profession. Um, it was like the day that uh, your mom and dad told you that Santa Claus wasn't real or oh, that God. there was no Easter bunny or that the fairy, the tooth fairy was your dad or your mom. <laughs> oh, I, I can totally relate to that because, you know, like I, I was always the kind of hairdresser who, who was really like, I was like all in, like right. buy into it, buy into the, the technology and the marketing spin and this and that. And then, you know, it, it wasn't until I got a little older in the industry and actually, you know, started meeting people like chemists right. and other educators who like yourself shed light on the truth and actually taught me how to read an ingredient deck and right. taught me about pH. And all of a sudden, you know, some, some product that has, for example, this is a true story, a peroxide scavenger in it was literally just an acid that right. you ran through the hair. Right. You know, so but I, it's, we live in a world of words, right? Semantics. Yeah. It's Absolutely. how you say it. And if you put it, if you, what is it you said? Putting lipstick on a pig? Yeah. <laughs> if you pig. put it, if you put it in a pretty dress, it sounds so much nicer. But it's and still big. Yes. Uh, I, I'll tell you that uh, the most I learned was about the reality of it was one, when I got an opportunity to work with Sam, um, that was an eye-opening experience in my life. And um, the most genteel person you would have ever met, just totally <laughs> low voice, quiet, never had a loud voice, but his words were powerful. Right. And then going to school fortified what I learned from him, re-enrolling, going back to college. And then 
my time working in the laboratory with Redken. That was an amazing time for me because now I was working with real people who actually earned their lab coats. They didn't have it as a costume when they did a video. (laughs) And I would ask them, I'd say, but wait, doesn't it do this? And they would just laugh at me. They would go, (laughs) you know, and it was just an amazing moment to realize there were so many things that I thought were one way and I discovered were another. And of course that made me a real danger <laughs> working for a manufacturer. <laughs> well, because people, it's hard, it's hard to go back. People in marketing right? hated me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's hard. It's hard to go back. Like once you know the truth of right. how something works and then, you know, you have to like turn around and, and keep with, you know, the sort of doctrine of the company and marketing, right, as opposed to actually just saying what, what something is, right, you know, that was, uh, it was one of those periods in my life that (laughs) I would just always, I would be a thorn in their side, you know, um, they had more than one, one, one lightener they had, I think at one time they had five different lighteners and I would see people try to position five lighteners and they'd say, this one makes it beige blonde. This one makes it pastel blonde. (laughs) And I would raise my hand. I go, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's powder. How does it know? (laughs) It's just powder. (laughs) But they sold that story and people bought that story. And, um, you know, we, there's lots of things that happen in the industry. And, and I thought we had done a pretty good job over the 26 years that I spent uh, trying to help salon professionals. But then as I look out today, because what has happened because of social media now, <laughs> there are, uh, self-anointed experts. <laughs> they, I don't know. I don't know where they go for their certificate. I don't think they have a certificate. I think they just think they're an expert uh, because they do a lot of one thing. That doesn't make you an expert, <laughs> but uh, it's just that's serving time. That's doing time over and over again. Because if you're doing the wrong thing, that's not making you um, more educated, more empowered. And so today we we'll, we combat that all the time. I mean, that's one of the purposes of this show. You know, if, if you're watching the show for the first time today, um, we call this rabbit trails for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, we get on rabbit trails. We go down a rabbit hole here and again, uh, quite often, actually, because there's so many rabbit holes. You have to be careful where you walk. They're everywhere. And... Um, we also want to call people out, you know, and, and talk about, especially if you're an educator about the stories that you share, you know, the information that you share. Um, you know, Max, I find this really funny today. A lot of people advertise as being non-branded yeah. or brand neutral. And they don't understand, I think, how difficult it is to maintain a brand neutral mindset. Right. Because inevitably you sit in somebody's class who says they're brand neutral and you hear brand information slipping in. They can't help themselves. <laughs> and you go, yeah, well, I heard that just, story. I heard that story. It's just like, you know, like I saw an Instagram profile that said, first thing it said was independent educator in, in bold letters. And then right underneath it, it said, you know, insert company's name here, advocate, insert another (laughs) company's name below that company. And it said educator. Yeah. So I was like, well, you're not an independent educator. You're, you're an educator for a brand. That's right. And you're, if you're an advocate for another brand, you're kind of working for that brand. And there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Right. You know, but it's like when it, when it comes down to, to brass tacks, right? I know that you can agree with this, Dennis, is that like mm-hmm. our 
mission, at least as far as the world of hair color goes, is we want to empower everyone with the knowledge right. and confidence that they could walk into any salon setting, not knowing what hair color line that they're working with, can go right. grab a manufacturer swatch book, look at a few key things, dye out a few key shades on, you know, a piece of white fabric and know, you know, enough to navigate any kind of color situation. Absolutely. That, because you know? our belief is that the magic is in the hairdresser. Yeah. It's really not in the product. Because if you understand how the chemistry of hair color works, you can color hair with anything. You it's know, one of my, my first hair color mentors, you know, I, I kind of, I used to kind of like secretly in my mind was like so turned off because we used for our permanent hair color, uh, one of the liquid brands sold at Sally's. Mm. And I was like, ah, oh, this, you know, like this hair color is like, it's just so uncool. You know, I was like a young hairdresser, you know, sure. I, I didn't know anything about salon cost. I, all I knew was that like, whose booth was the flashiest at the, at the show, whose, you know, like images were the best. And that's the hair color I wanted to use. I didn't want to use this crap, even though this woman did amazing hair color and right. she did it, you know, with, something that you know has been around a long time yeah, yeah often oftentimes looked down upon and she was like max it's hair color right and i was like but 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 why can't we use you know this one and she you know what was really interesting with her though is she had a little uh best of the best area too and where she had uh some things from other brands that just were like you know, one brand of uh, Italian color line, she carried the reds mm -hmm. because nothing was as bright as those, you know? And then there is a, there's a brand of uh, French color that their high lift blondes are kind of like the industry benchmark, Right. you know, she had some of those, yeah. but other than that, you know? Yeah. See the dispensary becomes a walk in time. Yeah. Because she can tell you where she saw the red shades, where she bought the, Mm -hmm. why i saw so-and-so use those back in such and such date you know yeah. and and that that is the reality of it uh, they bought because of performance now in in their in their mind what they consider performance instead of being tied to one brand and here's the thing you know i had a, a really great opportunity to work with uh, a very well-known hair hair colorist in los angeles to help him formulate color for one of his celebrity clients and <laughs> the color we used was you know not the high-end color and yeah. i found i discovered that there are a lot of high-end uh, salons that don't necessarily use high-end color no because and, it's color and, that's the way they look know, at it that uh one of the two main liquid brands that are sold in at Sally's, which is, you know, considered uh, open line distribution right. is still one of the top five yeah. selling hair color brands right. in the, in the country. Right. So that's, that kind of is telling that, you know, it, you know, it's, it's doing what the big dogs are doing, but sure. you know, for a fraction of the price. That's right. You know, and, and, and they could afford to use a $10 Fourteen dollar a tube hair color, but they choose not to. Yeah. Um, and people say, "Well, that's not that's not fair." Well, why? If they're doing quality service and they're able to deliver it with a product that doesn't cost them ten dollars an application, then why wouldn't they do that? Yeah. So, I mean, I understand that, and, and I understand it more now than I did before when I understand that most hair color brands are more similar than they are different. Yeah. 100%. You know, we are arguing over pff, the minuscule stuff. <laughs> minutia. 
Minutia, absolutely. Um, but that makes way for a lot of misinformation. And that's the one thing that, uh, again, if you're watching the show for the first time, is that, you know, we laugh about that because we do crazy stuff as hairdressers. You know, we say stuff that doesn't make sense sometimes. You know, we wish we could have grabbed it and put it back in our mouth because I shouldn't have said that. Um, sometimes we say stuff because if we're an educator, we get called out by somebody in our, in our class. You know, that's the, the thing that, and, and the thing that an educator who's not well-grounded fears most is someone asking them a question they can't answer. That is their biggest fear. And they will do, they will address it in two ways. Number one, they will give you word salad. They'll just start throwing words out until <laughs> they blind you with all the words and you, you start to nod your head like, oh, please stop. Okay, I get it. Or they'll ignore you or they'll be condescending. Right. You know, um, because they will assume it's a defensive mechanism because they don't know that. I mean, I, I think I told you the story about a, a hairdresser that worked with me for quite some time. And when, a, when she would be talking to her clients about product, <laughs> the client would say, but wait a minute, this product has this in it. Why does it have this in it? And she didn't know the answer to that. So she raised her voice. <laughs> so she spoke louder, thinking that that would show that she had more confidence and that she knew Meanwhile, oh, man. You know, it was obvious that, you know, she wasn't well grounded in the information. And so you, you see that on social media and you see lots of that going on. I mean, th there's still people who teach really a lot of a uh, tremendous amount of misinformation. But the fun is that we get to take some of that and really laugh about it, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, I got one for you today. Hmm. And um, so what we're going to do is I think, you know, we've got a couple of different little segments that we're adding into the show as we do each episode. And so um, we're going to do our first uh, new segment and we like to call it say what? So here it is. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Say What? Say this what? Segment, say what? <laughs> this segment is all about uh, pieces of uh, education that we get off of social media, and um, we want to share it with you. We want you to learn to laugh about it, and, um, and I think this one you're going to find quite telling. Uh, many of you have heard me talk about direct dyes and about uh, the way that we approach working with direct dyes. First of all, we don't try to lighten them out of the hair. That's the language that we use. We try to naturalize them first and then lighten them because we know this, that if it's a natural color, it will lighten much more successfully than if you try to lighten something unnatural out of the hair. And the biggest thing is when you try to lighten blue, when most people attack blue with bleach, as, as, as hair lightens, hair eventually will contribute to that result. And most often hair will contribute some yellow tones, yellow and blue make green. And that's why a lot of times when you try to lighten blue out of the hair, you see green. Um, but there's someone out there who's challenging that information. She uh, is well known in social media. She has a huge following on Instagram. And uh, so I'm going to let you see her spin. And then we're going to debrief it a little bit. So I'm going to Go to share screen and Max, we should have, there it is right there. And so I invite you to take a listen to this um, and here we go. 
by one fourth of an inch from the scalp. Now, she wants a color change today, so I put a couple of foils in the back while I did this to see what was going to pull it out, and she wanted pink on the ends, and I'm like thinking to myself, like, as soon as I start to, like, pull this purple out, it's going to go green. So let's talk about that. So right now, everybody's kind of going like, oh, it's because of the underlying pigment that's there. Sure, if we're talking about a level 9, 10, that you're still having green issues, yes. It could be because of the yellow and the blue pigment is the last to leave, and yellow and blue make green. But let's be realistic about this. As I was pulling this out, it was at a level 6 and it was green. And we all know that a level 6 is not yellow. So yes, purple will go green regardless of your underlying pigment it's just red leaves first and then blue and green are the last to leave when you pull it out you're going to see that here in a few so here i went ahead and did her root area after a process for about 20 minutes in zone two and then i applied there and now i am pulling out the ends and you know i don't want to compromise her hair it's probably one of the reasons that her color does stay so well i gave her the big <laughs> talk about you know jumping around the color wheel and we just can't do that so here you can see her hair is still pretty green. All right. Stop. Ooh. I just got to take a deep breath. Did she say root? I, I think so. <laughs> I, and well, what was it? She didn't want to compromise the hair. Yeah, she was bleaching bleached hair. Okay. So listen, <laughs> take a look at that hair, Max. Mm -hmm. That's nowhere near a level seven. Mm -mm. That green is like a seafoam green. Yep. That's setting it between a level eight and a level nine. So yeah. it's, it's, almost a, it's almost a pastel. Yes. Really, yes. You know? So that's like, you know, pretty close to a nine. Right. In my book, you know. So, so here is someone who is saying something that is giving totally misinformation because the reason she's got that seafoam green <laughs> is because she just put bleach on it. <laughs> That's why she got green. Had nothing to yeah. do with blue turning to green. It has to take into consideration what the hair is contributing. So I just right. think that that's a huge piece of information that it's important for us to know and think about when we are uh, working with, uh, with color. Yeah. Well, and I think even, even to take that one step further, really kind of like the, the big lesson here would be to really understand what is happening to the hair when you're, when you bleach it, and apply a direct dye to right. it. Cause you're not right. actually, you know, like when you're doing a color change and you're, you're lightening the hair with lightener, you know, on that hair that's already been stained by, by direct dyes, you know, you're not actually lightening the dye out of it. No, you're not. You're altering the canvas beneath it. Exactly. So it's reading differently. That's right. And, and I think that that's, again, an important part of what we need to understand is that you can say anything you wish about what's happening, but the visual is self-explanatory if you understand exactly what happens when we lighten hair. Yeah. You know, it's the, the, and there's tons of this kind of stuff out there. And now you have hairdressers who have obviously heard our message. I mean, I'm not foolish enough to think we're the, well, I hope we're not the only ones that are saying, hey, it's that underlying pigment that's causing it to look green. I, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, we give that message. That's what we deliver as a company. That's the way we train. But I'm hoping other trainers are out there saying the same thing because that, in fact, is what it is. And um, that was obvious there. Hopefully there was, no, um, I mean, if, if you think it was different, please direct message us and tell me, say, Dennis, that was a level seven green because I can't see a level seven there. I mean, just, just 
All right. So for if we, sorry, I'm like real passionate about this right now. So typically across the boards, what's the underlying pigment for a level seven? It's usually orange, mm -hmm. right? Right. So clearly for the hair to be what it started out as, uh, you know, it was like blue. And I think there was like a, like a purple, purple right? Pur blue and purple. Yeah. 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 The, the hair had to be lightened past a level seven for it even to hold to on to those colors. Paint. So <laughs> like that, yeah. it was just like the, I'm just looking at it from the, sure. the logic standpoint, you know? Right. So, so you're at least, at least at a level eight, probably if we wanted to like go have these, she's probably like an eight and a half, maybe right. not quite a nine, but lighter than an eight. And using the harshest chemical that we use in hair color on that hair and having the nerve to say, <laughs> what is she going to protect the integrity of the hair? <laughs> yeah. She, I don't want to compromise the hair. Don't want to compromise I, the hair. I, I, the what hair is, is compromised is, already. No kidding. And <laughs> in um in our in our science course, I can't remember the the percentage of uh, it was like an approximation or approximate percentage of disulfide bonds broken with a lightener with one lightener application. 20%. So so let's just think about that. You already have the least amount of disulfide bonds in the hair out of the Absolutely. three bonds that hold the hair together, right? right? So let's just say that client 10 weeks earlier, that was her, she was virgin hair. She had her first lightning session. She lost probably around 20% of the bonds that give the hair its internal cohesion. Right. So it, right. those, they hold the hair together, you guys. This is like, they're like the kind of like like the bones in your body <laughs> exactly right so then you know she she does the the root area with the lightener that's virgin hair that's fine it can oh, probably she the afford roots. she didn't do the root she did the roots <laughs> um and but then she pulled the color over the ends yes she did all so the you're you're looking at now 40 percent you know, at least. <laughs> so now the hair is literally, if you just look at it mathematically, you guys, it's all you've now comprom the hair has about half the strength from that line of demarcation down. Yeah. Yeah. You got about three disulfide bonds left. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let me get my meter out. Do -do 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 -do. Oh. So, but, but what? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I was just like, uh, it's it's sort of like counter counterproductive, you know? And it's yes. like when the thing, it's like, yeah, you can do anything to the hair once, but, you know, right. there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. That's and true. at the end of the day, it's like when you're, when you're doing stuff like that behind the chair and you're pushing the envelope of the hair fiber you know, when things start to go sideways and sometimes they don't, they don't go sideways until the client gets home right? and they, they pull out their Revlon uh, blow dryer brush thing. That's like all the rage right now. <laughs> yes. that, by the way, that thing gets so hot. Hot, yes. Uh, and then, you know, they, they start to get breakage. Whose fault does it really become? Comes... That's the right. Service provider's fault. That's right. So because they set it, that hair up for failure. Exactly. And yeah. and we all know that like sometimes things for social media, they're you know, they're doing these crazy makeovers to make it like really impactful and you know, grab attention. And they do, and some people just think that right. that's how you can approach it, but you know, we we are trying to like just bring it back to a little more reality of right. all the things you gotta honestly look at and and deal with yeah. you know in in these situations amen brother yeah all right so listen the next time 
you go on social media and you're posting information, be sure you're on point because we are watching you. Big brother. Watching you. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. How was that, huh? Hooey. The crazy stuff you see on social media. Lord I'll have mercy. <laughs> All right. So, look, hopefully you found that educational. Hopefully you found something beneficial there to where why so many hairdressers are confused because there's a huge amount of us in this country and throughout the world that actually connect with each other on social media every day. So here's somebody who has like thousands of followers who actually believe what they just showed. They said, see, it's a level seven green. So that's one of the things that we're trying to do with this program is we're trying to really look at things that is inaccurate information. I call them pigment pirates. In my upcoming book called Captain Color versus the Pigment Pirates, I have a whole chapter on what a pigment pirate is. And these are things that rob us from our knowledge. They rob us from success. They rob us from confidence. And, and we're trying to avoid those. We're trying to help you bypass those so you don't have to deal with them. And sometimes it takes back, takes looking back at what we've learned in the history, what we've embraced in our careers as being truth and asking ourselves, is it really truth? Right. And, you know, think about the things that we've done, Max. It's been pretty funny. In this show, we've talked about the fact that um, peroxide mixed with hair color doesn't meet somewhere in the middle. Peroxide actually takes the pH of the hair color or of the bleach. Right. Check. We've, um, we've talked about the fact that uh, color molecules do not exist in your tube or your bottle. <laughs> they aren't even a color molecule until they penetrate and find their way to the, the core of the hair and they develop into a color molecule. Check. Um, we, we've talked about the fact peroxide doesn't open the cuticle, <laughs> right? Check. Yeah. Acid color is not actually acidic. Acid color is not actually acidic. Check. <laughs> Demi permanent colors and permanent colors are permanent color. They're both permanent color. Check. <laughs> so think about all these things that we believed that are not actually true. Right. Simple as that. And so, because my wife says my brain's an interesting place to visit, but you don't want to spend a lot of time there. <laughs> you know, I've been pondering this thought and I've shared it with Max about a belief system that we have had in this industry. It's been part of our language. Um, and so I, I, I wanted to find out more about it and it's become popular again because recently there have been people who've been doing broadcasts on social media who've talked about this behavior or theory and um, people are reacting like it's brand new. They're going, oh my God, I never heard of that before. And naturally you wouldn't have if you are you know, young and new in this industry, you may have not heard about this because there was a period of time to when this was talked about a lot more, but in any case, it's still part of our language. So I went in search. I went in search on Google. I tried to find any and all information I could on this. There was none. Uh, I typed in a question every way I could think to possibly ask a question. I could find nothing. Um, I went on YouTube and searched for this theory and nothing, no response, nothing. Um, and so I even looked for the one person I knew who really talked about it more than anything else, who had a product for many years and talked about this theory. And of course, couldn't find anything on that person. And so I reached out to one of my mentors who um, is in transit now traveling. So he's not gotten back to me yet, but 
if I can't find out any information on a piece of uh, a theory that people share, it makes me really wonder, <laughs> does the theory hold water? Does that make right. sense? I mean, because pretty much anything in science, that if it was actually a theory that was adopted and used by cosmetic chemists, you'd be able to type it into Google and you'd be able to find out information, right? Totally. Because you can virtually type anything in there that has to do with hair color, you know, like what's the pH of ammonia, you know, right. or is ammonia positive or negatively charged? By the way, ammonia has no charge. <laughs> Ammonia is neutral, okay? Just for all those people that say use ammoniated color to remove direct dyes because it, it'll draw those direct dyes out because it's negatively charged. Nonsense, not charged at all. Just in case you want to know, it's, it's there. You can find it. So anyway, here's the theory. And I'm just going to give you a taste because we're going to do some testing. And the theory is about something called working volume. So here's the theory. The theory is when I mix equal parts of hair color with peroxide, if it's 20 volume peroxide, I now have in my mixture a working volume of 10, which means in my brain, <laughs> you have 20 volume peroxide to begin with, which is going to release more oxygen than 10 volume. Simple as that, because that's what peroxide is, right? Mm -hmm. Now I mix it with color and I've given up half of the strength of that acid. I don't know how that is possible because here's what we do know. Here's what science says. When I mix peroxide with an alkaline, which is hair color, which is like a thousand times stronger according to the pH scale, 10,000 times stronger than the optimum pH for hair, 4.5 to 5.5. What happens is peroxide begins to decompose. The pH changes, peroxide's moving up the scale. And what's physically happening is it's releasing oxygen. So literally mixing peroxide with a base or an alkaline is going to accelerate the release of oxygen, not diminish the release of oxygen. Am I off base, Max? I mean, I, I don't think so. So, so my question is, is like, and, and here's what I do know, like if, if I mix water with peroxide, I do change the, the release of oxygen simply because I'm using water, which is at the balance point of the pH scale of seven and water is the universal solvent. So water will take on the pH of whatever you mix it with. So if I mix water with peroxide, the pH is the pH of peroxide, but the release of oxygen has been reduced because water itself has oxygen in it and it dilutes that. That's true. So my question to the industry is, is it because we know that taking and mixing equal parts water with a volume of developer makes the developer weaker? Is that where we came up with the thought process? And sometimes we just think it, we don't really test it. We come up with the thought process. Well, if I mix it with a color, it must be weaker too. Hmm. So I don't know the real answers to that. We're still waiting, but we're working on it. And the minute that we find the real answer and find the reality, um, we'll make it part of our next episode that we're, that we're going to be involved in. Now, listen, this is huge. I'm going to get lots of blowback from people that watch this video because they're going to say, <laughs> you're crazy, man. You're challenging something we've been teaching people for 30 to 40 years. And, and but there's lots of things that we've taught for 30 to 40 years that aren't accurate. <laughs> so don't get all beside yourself. <laughs> get a grip, relax, take a deep breath. <laughs> uh. and, and let's just look at this and see, you know, because here's people, people are taking this theory and now they're saying, and this is what makes me concerned. Now they're saying 
that if I mix two parts of color to one part of 40 volume, it makes 40 volume 20 volume, and I will get better deposit over great coverage. Now that makes me a very, very afraid because I know how caustic 40 volume is. And I can't believe that by mixing 40 volume with two parts of color, that it's going to reduce the strength of 40 volume. So it's two parts of color and just one, one part, part of 40 volume. 40 volume. Right. Huh. I mean, because right. it's just not going to happen. That just doesn't make any sense to me. No, no. So these are the things that we're working with here and um, we'll be getting back to you on this. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> today's been kind of a scrambled day, I guess. Huh, Max? Ooh. Well, my brain is scrambled. That's for sure. <laughs> well, listen, we want to thank you for those of you that are watching us here on YouTube. And we want to invite you to subscribe. We also want to thank you for all the feedback you've been giving us. Uh, we are so excited that now we are actually seeing some commercials on the front end of our videos. That means that we're getting some traction on YouTube. So if you find this beneficial, if you find what we do entertaining, um, share it with your friends. Um, we want to grow our we want to grow our show and, and everything that we're doing. And truly, our whole concern is to help you become more successful. Now, you can also follow Max and I on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair, and you can find me at Real Captain Color. Um, you know, <clears throat> follow us on there. We have uh, IGTV where you can uh, watch a lot of videos that we post. Uh, Max posts videos as well. Uh, some great information there. We're also very involved. If you're not a member of Hair Tribe, uh, think about joining us. Um, the one reason we have a lot of people who are waiting to, to get admitted into Hair Tribe, but they're not answering all the questions. There's only two questions you have to answer. <laughs> you know, this is not the federal government. We only want well, you to answer two questions. Well, actually, there there is no longer uh, the wait. The wait list yes, has been we cleared had to, out. We had to so. make an adjustment. Yes. Um, but anyway, we'd love to see you in Hair Tribe. Hair Tribe gets access to our podcast uh, where no else, nowhere else on social media is it, is it put other than on Anchor, uh, anchor.fm forward slash Dennis hyphen Gebhardt. Um, but our podcast, you can find it on Anchor. But uh, for Hair Tribe people, they get it immediately the minute just before the new podcast drops. So you can join us on there as well. Hair Tribe and is also the home of the big board. It's so also the home of the, the big board. The big board posts, so which are access. super enlightening. Yeah, you get access to the big boards and all that good stuff. And we invite you to come to our website and take a look at our educational page. Our website is www.gurunation.net. And uh, take a look at the education that we offer. Not only the webinars you can download and watch, uh, and, uh, you have access to them for about uh, 90 days, three months. Uh, or you can join us on a virtual classroom, actually live class online. And then, of course, coming at the end of summer, we're going to hopefully be doing some live programs where <clears throat> we'll actually be in person with you. I can't wait till that happens. Me so, too. Me too, man. I'll tell you. So in any case, it has been a blast. I thank you all so very much. And oh, oh. Well, oh. there's our ride, Max. I hear him I coming hear in. It. So I'll see you in the clearing for the chopper. And meanwhile, to all of you, as always, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. Max, how about you? I'm out of here. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Support, you guys have a good have, one. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.